communication high school. I'm Izzy Cavazzoni. And I'm Tommy Fletcher. You're watching the first ever show of Ink TV. Each month we'll go over anything and everything CHS and recap the past month. So let's start off with April. The Coastal Communications Club hosted their annual festival on Friday, April 8th with the hope of raising a large profit for St. Jude's Hospital. Let's head over to Jackie Geller for more details on the event. Thank you, Izzy. The festival's theme was It's a Giving World for St. Jude's. Students formed groups and made displays for the country of their choosing, ranging from China to Mexico and to Iceland, which took the crown at the end of the night. Each group offered food and facts about the country they represented. There were also various performances by students from CHS and other schools. Some talents included singing and dancing. Let's go to CCC Council Member Sam Dellis to hear her input on the event. On a scale of 1 through 10, how successful was the CCC Festival? Thanks, Jackie. Each year, Skills USA members prepare year-round for their respective competitions, and last month they put their skills to use. Club members competed at the state level and attended the Champions Awards in Somerset on April 16th. Seven CHS students took home gold medals. The day started at 5.15 in the morning for all competitors, who met at CHS before driving off to their competitions. CHS saw competitors in categories like photography, design, and entrepreneurship. Off-site competitions, which took place in March, were also recognized at the award ceremony later that night. CHS's seven gold medal winners, Sarah Lynch for prepared speech, Emma McCaffrey and Laura Murphy in web design, Jennifer Villavicencio in photography, Lilia Kang in graphic design, and the team of Kate Dickinson and Liam Marshall for audio radio production were invited to the national competition in Louisville, Kentucky this June. CHS didn't take home any second place titles this year, but six students snagged the bronze. Winners included Ebby Shim and Andrew Wang for state banner design and the broadcast news production team of Julia Rongo, Kayla Harris, Kelly Hooper, and Connor Duffy. This year's national competition coincides with graduation on June 20th. But SkillsUSA representatives said it will be okay for our students to fly out the next day. Signing off for Inc. TV, I'm Marie Schilder. We do take home quite a few medals every year. Hopefully we'll take home some more at Nationals. Definitely. Well, Monday, April 18th, marked the beginning of Spring Spirit Week here at CHS. From Pajama Day to the final minutes of the clothing drive, the classes battled it out for bragging rights and the seniors came out on top. Emma Heck has all the info. What better than coming to school in your PJs? Well, that's just what CHS students did on April 18th for the first day of Spirit Week. During lunch, the SGA hosted the Egg and Spoon Race competition, and the sophomores grabbed first. On Tuesday, CHS certainly had their prep on. Louis Pulitzer dresses and vineyard vines hats took over the school. The lunchtime event was the balloon pot where the sophomores took first. On Wednesday, everyone in the school was a twin. Rock, paper, scissors was the lunchtime event, and the juniors came out on top. Thursday was Disney Day, and CHS students went all out. Cupcake Wars was the lunchtime event, and the juniors iced out the competition. On the final day of Spirit Week, April 22nd, CHS got a blast from the past with Decades Day. The annual lip sync was held during lunch, and the sophomores placed first. Throughout the week, grades also earned points for participation in the newest Spirit Week competition, the Clothing Drive, which the seniors dominated. Each grade donated garbage bags full of clothing, sheets, toys, and other items, and were required to bring in at least 25. Every bag after 25 counted as two Spirit Week points. The bags were then donated, and the SGA received 20 cents for each pound. They made over $1,000. The week was wrapped up with the annual Mr. CHS event, an all-male beauty pageant. This year, Mr. CHS categories counted for Spirit Week points. In the end, the seniors were the 2016 Spirit Week champions, followed by the sophomores, the juniors, and the freshmen. Now back to the studio. For Ink TV, I'm Emma Heck. Thanks, Emma. Speaking of Mr. CHS, the SGA was able to host this CHS tradition again this year. Let's throw this over to Kate Redu for more. On Friday, April 22nd, the SGA held the annual Mr. CHS pageant, where 14 contestants competed to support their grades in the final Spirit Week event. 
The night included a dress to impress, question and answer, and talent portion. All of the contestants were judged and scored in each of the three categories by teachers Miss Morgan, Miss Ortner, and Miss Bradley. At the end of the event, co-hosts Lauren Masiana and Shane Nolan crowned senior Nick Brennan of Middletown the new Mr. CHS. The night included piano, dancing, slam poetry, and even a promposal. In the end, junior Mark Despina and date Annie Ruoff won cutest couple, sophomore Cameron DiStefano took crowd favorite, and Nick Brennan stole funniest act and the Mr. CHS title itself. The night concluded with the final tallies for the Spring Spirit Week competition. And now, let's take a quick break and head over to Courtney Cushnight, who asked CHS students about the springtime. Spring has sprung here at CHS, and I'm going out into the halls to find out what that means to our student body. What was the highlight of your spring break? The highlight of my spring break had to have been probably when I got to tour uh, Columbia University. Um, my Both my parents, well, it was Barner in Columbia, but they're alumni up there, and I knew actually some of the teachers there because they had been at my, some of my parents' parties or whatever. It was really interesting. I really loved the school. I really just like relaxed. Honestly, it's kind of a basic answer, but like I really enjoyed having a break from school, I guess, and like being able to sleep a lot more. Spring break, getting sick. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I went to TCNJ. It was pretty cool. Sleeping in. Sleeping in. Go bright. <laughs> okay. Silver is always in, it's always neutral, it goes with everything, and I love them. Oh, goodness. Well, I think you have to be prepared for spring uh, because, you know, it could be very cold in the morning and then really warm in the afternoon. So, layers. That would be my tip. What is your favorite thing about spring? My favorite thing about spring is uh, the April showers bringing May flowers. Oh my gosh, looking at the trees turning green, I love that. They're so pretty. Thank you. Flowers blooming. Baseball. Oh yeah, baseball. Baseball, yeah. Baseball, thank you, Dad. Baseball. Baseball. Spring TV, I'm Courtney Kushner. I think my favorite part about spring is the weather. You know, it's really nice outside and it's great to spend some time outdoors. And mine definitely has to be the flowers. But now, let's switch gears from CHS to the CCC once more. The club headed to Lakewood on Wednesday, April 27th, to participate in a day of activities with the children from the program Head Start. Let's go to Lara Graney for more information. Thanks, Izzy. Club advisor Campbell took selected students from the club to play with the Head Start kids at a carnival. CHS students ran many stations for the children, such as finger painting, bubble blowing, and crafts. Head Start's website describes itself as a program that provides child development services to preschoolers and their families. They help both children in their growth as individuals and parents in their growth as caregivers. Let's head to Campbell for more information. I have always thought that it would be so great, great if we could have the little kids from Head Start here in our festival. So since we cannot do that, so I decided to bring them like a little festival for children. I think it was great. It was really cold, but the kids had so much fun, and we did too. The CCC also teams up with Head Start for the annual holiday show, where CHS students perform for the children. For Ink TV, I'm Lara Green. Back to the studio. Thanks, Lara. On April 29th and 30th, the Drama Club set up at the Jersey Shore Arts Center for two performances of Somewhere Nowhere. The story focused on high school students just like us, and the shows were a huge success. The Drama Club's production of Somewhere Nowhere was May 29th and 30th. The show was held at the Jersey Shore Arts Center in Ocean Grove. It follows teens in a small town and their struggle with sibling rivalries, boy drama, college decisions, and other problems that the teens face. The comedy had a Friday and Saturday night show, both held at 6.30. Somewhere Nowhere was directed and produced by communication students with the help and guidance of their advisor, Mr. Bangle. The cast and crew started working in January to make the show a success. Signing off for Ink TV, this is Bridget Garrett. That's all we have for you today on the April show of Ink TV. I'm Izzy. And I'm Tommy. Thanks for tuning in.